I think we should, we should, our new ringer merch should be let Jimmy f Yes. <laughs> that should be our That's new so shirt. That's so good. Guys, let's start off our conversation here talking about Jimmy Garoppolo and Tom Brady. Because mm. I think that no matter what happens for the short time we have left with Tom Brady and the possible decade we have with Jimmy Garoppolo, they're always going to be intertwined with each other. Like, it, their careers are always going to be intertwined. Is Tom Brady terminally ill? <laughs> <laughs> the short time we have left with We him. have zero proof that Tom Brady doesn't have a portrait of himself somewhere in that house <laughs> that is going to let him play until he's 65 years old. Until I see it, I'm not going to believe it, so... Always trust, trust Mays to drop the first literary yeah, reference. Sorry, the reason why yeah, I think that this is that. the case, though, is because if Brady, let's say, twists an ankle or gets, like, you know, whatever things afflict middle-aged men, I you personally would us. know. You tell us! <laughs> He's, oh, Patriots fans are automatically going to be like, but we could have had Garoppolo. We could have had Garoppolo if we just hung on to Garoppolo. And by that same token, Garoppolo is already going to be playing his career in always in the shadow of the, arguably the greatest quarterback of all time. And don't you think it's kind of interesting to have these two guys, separate coasts, separate conferences, but still have like this like weird like line connecting them? First of all, the entitlement of Patriots fans to think we deserve Jimmy Garoppolo post Tom Brady <laughs> yes. is some real bullshit. Yes. Second of all, <laughs> yes. Uh, I think that the fact that there's this pall over Jimmy Garoppolo's career no matter what he does. Yeah. Is unfair to Jimmy Garoppolo, but it's also unavoidable. I always think if a guy is extremely handsome, has many, many, many millions of dollars, and is dating porn stars, that the first word that comes to mind is unfair. <laughs> Paul. Always. A Paul yeah. over his career. A Paul. It's interesting because we also have like this sort of need, and when we're talking about football, there's either like a, a tendency to talk about the brand new things or the very old things. Right. Well, that's the interesting thing. Is like we are as fans, we're obsessed with recency and primacy. We're obsessed with history and we're obsessed with the fresh new thing. And he technically, you know, he's been in the league for a handful of years and should be in that middle tier in terms of experience. But because he's actually played so few games and because of the trade last year and the sort of energizing, propulsive effect of that closing run with the Niners where they literally didn't lose when he was out on the field— you sort of have this real sample size, but also this fresh feel like we're finally getting to see him start a year for the first time. It does feel new. Well, we want to hesitate to put him into that group, but the Niners gave him <laughs> the richest contract in the history of football. He's football. making like 40-something so million. No, so but to be fair, every new deal for a quarterback is that deal. But now. not a guy that's played seven games. So we, don't, we hesitate to put him in there because we've seen him so little, but the Niners didn't hesitate to give him that money. I talked to Kyle Shanahan about this when I was in San Francisco, and it was just, when do you feel comfortable about the choices? And when you, if they'd only seen his tape from Eastern Illinois, it's not a trade you make. But when you see those three games, it's enough because you've seen him on that level to take a risk to bring him in your building. And then the five games are enough to give the contract. When you see a guy in this situation, even if it's brief, it's often enough for NFL decision makers to say, I'm willing to take a chance on this. How much of it is sort of the whisper campaign and the narrative? Like, is that something that GMs and coaches and owners lend any credence to at all? The idea that oh, Tom Brady wanted this guy out of town, right? That's what all the reports were. And if he's threatened, it must be for a reason. Or is that just bullshit that only people on Twitter care about? I feel like it's the Belichick not wanting to get rid of him thing. Yeah. That's the most important stamp of approval in this entire situation. Yeah, because the they've seen Belich him in practice, He right? waited, exactly. No one knows him better than Belichick and that staff. And the fact that Belichick got less on the dollar than he could have because he did everything in his power to keep him I think is the greatest kind of endorsement of Jimmy Garoppolo that could possibly exist. It was one of the most like logical and like smooth trades I've ever seen in the NFL where you trade a quarterback to the quarterback whisperer. Yep. He takes a few games learning the playbook, comes in, wins six in a row. Everybody's just like, that's the guy. It's the guy from the next decade. But it was only logical from one side. Yeah, I know. Which is fascinating because we think of the Patriots as a franchise that doesn't make mistakes. Like that very rarely has a move where you even you even allow yourself for a moment to think, was that wise? What were they supposed to do though? Yeah, the trade him sooner or don't trade him. Or Why get rid of Brady. Until his value or, or is at the end the Brady era prematurely. Yeah, right. You're now you now you have a 41 year old. Tom Brady. So you have you, one more year? So what are you going to do? Do you though? think he's actually a robot? Let's play this out. Let's say the season ends, they don't trade him. He's a, he's a free agent. You can't franchise him because then he makes more than Brady while Brady's in your building. And that is just something that you can't let happen. Just Can I just quickly dynamics. say, like, I would really have loved to see <laughs> that. That, that sounds really wonderful. So it would have been amazing. Yeah. But that's <laughs> not going to happen. Just in terms of overall locker room dynamics and hierarchy, you're not going to pay him more than Brady for a single season because it completely screws up 
the authority that your starting quarterback has in that building. And you're speaking not going to do that. Yeah, you're but also, your quarterback's group is going to have so much. You're going to be dedicating so much money to your quarterback's group. Exactly. Too. Yeah. And you that's can't where, do it. That's where their Brady's advantage has been. Even with Brady making 15 million, if you're paying Garoppolo 22 and you have a 37 million dollar quarterback yeah. room, you can't maximize Brady's final couple of years. That means like this is never going to happen. Brian Hoyer has to be like Michael Clayton, like fixing all the problems <laughs> in that quarterback room. What is the the Patriots' biggest advantage for years has been? Tom Brady's contract. It's been Giselle. <laughs> the fact well, that Giselle yeah, makes money. Certainly. Right. <laughs> it's been the fact that they can dedicate more money to other positions than any other team with an elite quarterback on their anything but their first contract, right? It's been, what was Brady's cap at, like 14 or 15? About 15 million. Yeah. So that's just a huge, huge advantage for them. But isn't, the, isn't it beyond the money they just couldn't tell this guy when he was going to play? They just he couldn't. He wanted to start. He, yeah. well, no matter what the dollar value on it was, he was not going to take it because he was not going to sit behind Brady, Brady for any longer. He said he's going to play till he's 45, right? It doesn't so it, the Whatever the, the, the long-term kind of outlook was, he was not going to be a backup for another year. And can you blame him? You saw what he can do. And then you get into what maybe the limits are. I think the Garoppolo mania is totally fair. Like if he won the MVP this year with Shanahan, I, it, it wouldn't be the craziest thing that's ever happened. Wow, you really think that's possible? Oh, absolutely. We're talking so much about Garoppolo's potential, but what about... What about Brady, right? Like yeah. this guy who just went to the Super Bowl again last season. Is the decline for him, is it precipitous or could it be gradual? Like would a Tom Brady at 75% of what we saw from him last year still put the Patriots in contention? Yeah. That division, yes. I think so. Yeah. The, I mean, there's, Brady's kind of had different eras and, and he changes, they, they change their personnel all the time. But they're obviously, you know, Brandon Cooks is gone. Amendola's gone. You know, there's questions about the guys around him, but I think that's true but every this, year, though. Yeah. Every single Ron year, Gronkowski's alive. Yeah, I just want to like throw that out there right now. <laughs> but he's, he's also talking about him. like his investments and like I don't want to do this anymore. But that's a great sign to me. <laughs> that's like yeah, Gronk exactly. has finally like, matured progress and become an adult. Gronk, who's mature and like growing and uh, like and getting smarter, is actually bad for Gronk the football player because Gronk the football player is the guy you want trying to like hurdle a dude in the no. middle of the field. I see why you would say that, but I think he's finally at the point in his career where he actually has to start thinking about staying alive. Like if he keeps sustaining two to three potentially season or career ending injuries per year, yeah. that's, there's a real expectation. And getting date wild, on that. weird infections. Well, <laughs> that point. might still happen, but that might also happen for Jimmy G. <laughs> for way different reasons. Oh now, I will, I will pose this question to you. Okay. Are Jimmy's extracurricular activities in any way concerning to you? Not in the slightest. I honestly... You're the wrong person to ask about I this, honestly right don't understand. I mean this sincerely. Like, I am... Even as somebody who spends a lot of time thinking about the NFL and the media, I'm pretty confounded by the way that the who is Jimmy G dating narrative has like become an all-consuming exercise for the bulk of men who are I, currently alive on planet Earth. I think it's like, because everyone kind of looks at Jimmy G and tries to graft themselves onto his, graft themselves onto his life. I think this is part of the issue. You would think then the, the response would be slightly different right. to what's currently happening. Like. There's no judgment coming from this side of the table. Have you been paying attention saying. to how we talk about football for the last 20 years where it's just like, oh, I don't know, is this guy allowed to do this? Like, yeah, but like maybe g care about something that actually has some impact on the world and not just who he's f***ing. Okay, you remember the, the San Francisco Giants t-shirts like earlier, back when Tim Lincecum was winning Cy Youngs and everyone was wearing those Let Timmy Smoke shirts? So I'm surrounded by baseball fans, so I know you all know what I'm talking about. I think we should, we should, our new Ringer merch should be Let Jimmy F. Yes. <laughs> that should be our That's new so shirt. Good. Because who cares? Uh, who's this dating? is always going to get this here. Whole, frankly, this whole I think bit it's a good is thing. for the blooper reel. He is, he is embracing his stardom and his celebrity. He's finally out of Brady's shadow. We don't have, we always talk about how football players aren't really stars. You know, you're under the helmet. Guess what? People know what Jimmy G looks like. <laughs> I can't he's handsome. That. Yeah, I know that. Because he's handsome. Shut it down. That's why. Um, not five years, not one year, three years. Mm -hmm. Who would you rather have as your quarterback? This Brady. is the problem in and of I'd itself. I'd still rather have Brady. Brady. Yeah. Yeah. Quarterback is so dependent on infrastructure. Right. And like, I think I'd rather have Garoppolo with Shanahan, but that's because of how I feel about Kyle Shanahan. Here's I mean, why. Just, and, but that's the we've never, we talk about where Patriot, where quarterbacks could succeed or fail outside of the circumstances. We've never had to see Brady outside of the Bill Belichick, Josh McDaniel circumstances. It's like, it's really hard to judge both these guys because now Garoppolo was sent into just as good of circumstances. They've lived charms li charmed lives as quarterbacks. So to truly answer this question, we should trade Brady to the Bengals, 
And yes. Go, and Garoppolo should go play for the Lions. I think. Done. <laughs> I would love to see that. That is the exact football experiment I'm into. 